we trying to see what's going on out here with my girl. What's your name and what brings you out here today? My name is Daisy Kane. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, but I've been here for nine years, ATL. Okay, okay. Welcome, Welcome to the A. Welcome. And what brings you out here tonight? I'm here to see Scotty's new place. This is my first time being here since he moved from Calum Road. And I'm here to see Creed and Dennis as well. Okay. So, yeah. All right. And that is What's Happening. <laughs> Live on is with the Mason Noise for my dog, Big Chris. <laughs> Come on! Come on! My dog for sure! Wow, man, this is super special, man. I'm glad to have you here yeah, at Grills by Scotty yeah. on Edgewood yeah, and on the show. Hey, what's happening? Triple Threat. It's going Come on, man. I got my girl E in the back. You know E. Yeah, what's, what's up, up e? Grit? So, um, man, we're going to get into some topics today, man. I, I, I really appreciate you showing up. I know you didn't even have to do this. You know no, what I'm saying? Oh, like, no. nah, nah, but I appreciate it, though. You know, outside of just the, the friendship that we have, I know sometimes people can take advantage of friendships. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you and just the genuineness that me and you have kept, man, over yeah, years, man. Yeah, so I appreciate that, man. No doubt. Man, both ways. Hey, man, please make some noise one more time for Big Crit. So starting out, man, I, I know this. I, I guess a lot of people know this. You okay. from Meridian, Mississippi. Meridian, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah man. Queen City. Yeah. Queen City. Queen City. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, tell us what, what's what's life like in Meridian. I mean, it, I mean, clearly we country. Okay. We country, but we got how country. But hold on now, we got streets. It ain't no horseback. <laughs> nah, we got we got buildings. Ain't no dirt roads out there like that. Nah, bro. Like it's a city. It's a city, literally. When I was growing up, it's the second largest city in Mississippi aside from Jackson. Population has changed now, you know what I'm saying? But literally, it's a city, bro. You come down there, we got our high spots club that we perform at, open mics that we started at. And, um, and, and when you're growing up there, you don't realize just how, like, how small your city could be compared to other people. Right. But it's like, nah, man, it's like it's the humbleness. The, we got our own aspect, the hip hop and music, own radio station. It's, it's big enough where you got one block of beef against another one as far as rap is concerned. <laughs> right, right. It's nothing like people think. You feel me? That's crazy. Yeah. So my people from, Mar my dad is from Marvel, Arkansas. Okay, I never heard of that. <laughs> See that what I'm saying? See, so when I say country, yeah, bro, it's real <laughs> small. You ever heard of Marvel, Arkansas? <laughs> See, I know Marvel. Marvel. Okay. Say it slow. What about <laughs> Marvel. <laughs> Oh, Marvel. Marvel, like the... Marvel Arkansas. Oh, okay, no. So Hell. some people heard of Helena, West Helena, but then you got Marvel. See this? Okay. Right, so Memphis, Helena, West okay. Helena, okay. Marvel. Very home. small. Yeah. But see, when I think country, they got, like, when, when I would go visit my dad in the summertime, okay. they were picking cotton. Okay. Oh, no, that's that's road. My auntie. So that's kind of like the Delta. Almost. Okay. The aspect, you know, because we got Tunica, Mississippi, that area. I know about Tunica. Well, yeah, that's still the narrative. But no, not where I'm from. No. Wow. Yeah, we was, no. Yeah, no. Now, polo, polo, polo is the only kind that we probably picked. Okay, okay. Polo, sure. all I'm sorry. All right, all right. <laughs> so, so, Mississippi got a lot of major cities. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, So, you got Jackson. Jackson State, you got Mississippi Valley. It's like, it's a game. Then you got the Gulf Shore, uh, the, 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 the Gulf, right? It's the Gulf, that's it, Alabama. But let's see, they got the yeah. casinos. The casinos. Yeah. Hold on. There's a lot of major shit going on in Mississippi. And music. Yeah. Who yeah. are some people growing up that you listen to coming from Mississippi? I mean, uh, clearly David Banner. Yep, sure. David Banner. Who boss players back then, that was your name, but who goes in a lot of people know. Okay. Those little people, there's another artist from my city named Baby Ray, which is like one of the first people, a top dollar record. Wow. The first label that I quote unquote signed to in my city. Wow. But he was the first person we saw that sold actual physical copies 
uh, out of um, actual CD store back then. Good Vibrations was the name. Mm. Yeah. So it was people, man. You know what I'm saying? And Banner crushed it by being able to produce and rap. So he could get around other artists. And I remember when he had the song with Noriega and them. And I was mind blown. Because I just thought that, that the, the boundary and how far, would, how far he had to go to get them on a the song or even produce for them was phenomenal to me. Yeah. So he was like one of the first people you saw rap and produce. Hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. I knew David Banner because a guy named Mixo was producing for David Banner when I was coming up. Word. This when I was like in the streets. Okay. Like, doing my thing. Yeah. I met David Banner at the studio, and I I was at the like a pimp video shoot. That's crazy. In Mississippi. You lucky? I wasn't. Yep. <laughs> that had to be crazy. Was, <laughs> it was crazy. It was so lit, and um. I can't remember his name right now, but he had another artist. Well, Lil Flip. No, I mean Lil Flip was there. Okay, but but Baron was also working with. Um, it's a gang of people. Mr. Marcus Kamikaze. Mr. Marcus. Yeah. Mr. Marcus, yeah. my dog. Super smooth. <laughs> Super smooth. <laughs> Super smooth. <laughs> Super smooth. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I got, I got it. <laughs> Mr. Marcus was so hard. Yeah, he was, Niggas don't he know. Was Man, yeah. he was hard. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I did Yeah, know. you got real happy. I'm like, damn. That nigga was hard. Yeah, he, was he, he was snapping. You should go Google him. He was snapping. Man, I had a song, Mr. Marcus. It never came out. But that shit was hard. And Banner. Took me well. Miso actually took me to the video shoot. Yeah. At this time, I was coming up. Miso took me. Miso was balling at this time. He took me to the mall. Okay. Got me a nice outfit. I okay. went to the video shoot with Flip. Yeah. It was on the. It was at the court. Getting on the goal and all that. <laughs> and then Banner brought the whole city out. Later on that night, I think we went to go to the club, and Banner was so wild. He was taking people's shirts off. No, nah, we weren't even in, he wasn't even performing. Wasn't performing yet? Nah, he was, we was just kicking it. <laughs> and he was taking niggas' shirts off, pouring alcohol and shit. It was so funny, man. But yeah. shout out to Banner, man. He's that was a pivotal moment, especially for Mississippi. And I remember watching that video and being like, we got a like one that kind of crossed over the fact that we were country or whatever. And it's just a jamming song. Right. The time flip was dead. And I remember after that song came out, him and Lil Flip came out to Macintosh Farms, which is this field in Mississippi, and they performed and they sold it out. And it was so crazy to watch Banner performance because that was the first time I physically saw him perform. Me and Big Sunt was out there selling tickets for parking. Wow. That's how crazy this was. We selling tickets for parking. Every spinner you could think of, because Three Six Mafia spinners is on radio right now. Yeah. So everybody got every kind of spinner you could think of, and it's all kinds of denialists. You just everybody. And then when Banner got on stage, he, he went so crazy. When he climbed up a tree, and I think he was blowing fire at that time too. See, and it was like, bro, I was like, if I like, because I was rapping at the time, but like, if I get on stage, I gotta be like that. Wow. Like, it don't matter whether people know me or not, but I gotta take all the energy away from the crowd. I gotta. I gotta make it where people gonna remember me after this show. And it, it was such an impression on me that every show after that, I'm crowd surfing, climbing up shit. <laughs> Dang. That's dope, man. That's yeah. dope. Have you ever thought, because it's so many, like, I'll be sorry, I got so excited about Mr. Marcus. It's all, it's all. But have you ever thought that people from, I don't, I don't know if it's from Mississippi, or do you think that people overlook Mississippi or Mississippi artists? Because there's so much dopeness coming from there. But it's like when I talk to some of my partners from Mississippi, they'll, they'll let me know, like, man, you know, nigga from Mississippi, like, they get overlooked. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's an internal conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a and I like to use the the concept geography lottery. Mm -hmm. No one is in control of where they're born at. Mississippi is not a vacation destination. So naturally. When people think about where they want to hear music from or where they listen to music from, it's normally from a place they want to go. Wow. You know, so even growing up, before I even knew anything for real about New York, I wanted to go there because of the movies I saw, the, the music and the environment and the, the culture, New York. Then you get a little older and I'm watching West Coast, you know, movies and stuff. And I don't know nothing about Compton, but I'm like, oh, that's just crazy. I want to. And it's, it's, it's been like that, but when you think of Mississippi, most people think of uh, Mississippi burning. You know what I'm saying? Wow. They think about what they've learned in history. They think about Jim yeah. Crow. They think about slavery, the, slavery and rebel flags. Damn, and, so that takes away from the narrative you want to hear a Mississippi artist rap because they think 
that's exactly what the music gonna be talking about in off the rip. And it's the the idea that people that are country are uneducated or that the it, it's gonna be too difficult to understand how we enunciate words and phrases when it's not true at all. All you gotta do is put the C D in and check it out. You see? That's hard. Yeah. So, growing up, I read that you played the cello. Yes, I played the cello. The cello. Yeah, from yeah, uh, that's a fun thing. <laughs> I played the cello from fifth to eighth. Yeah, I went to the two. So I had to. You knew how you know how to play bass. bass. Well, so bass. you play instruments and stuff. Yeah. So, so, but for me back then, it was. Bass instruments was my shit though. I love anything that involved bass. And cello and the tuba are the only instruments that the band will give you for free. <laughs> Cause they know you can't afford them motherfuckers. Right. And the only thing you gotta do is buy, you know, the or you gotta buy the uh you gotta buy the piece. So when I was young and I was like, yeah, clearly you wanna play the trumpet, saxophone. These are cool instruments. Right. And a trombone you can take home with you. You can actually transition out of being in the band and just play. I had two, and I was doing sousaphone as well, so mm. it's just a different version of concert band and stuff. It was crazy. That's hard, bro. Yeah, That's hard. Then so you went into MTV Music Generator. Oh. Uh, yeah, 13 years old, my brother bought that program for me on PlayStation. And that was uh, when I first really got introduced into actually making beats. It was uh, 1999. Mm. So my brother bought it for me. I loaded up, and back then, you had to buy memory cards. I don't know how many of y'all had the PlayStation back then. Mm -hmm. It was just $25 a memory card. I remember that, nigga. And so anytime I sent them five seconds of a song, I would kill the entire memory card. So my dad would have like, yo, you know, can you get me more? You know what I'm saying? Right. And, I, and he was like, why? He's like, man, I'm trying to make this beat. And he didn't understand the concept of that. I'm on right. PlayStation. And she was like, Tetris. I'm lining it up. Dang. And if I want to sample computer love, I only can sample five, six, now I burn through $25. So I had to get real creative on how I produce, even on that machine. And that kind of led me into being able to use a small amount of uh, equipment to make what would sound like quality, like industry quality music. Man, that's dope, man. That's dope. Only child, were you only no, child? No, I was not only child, which made it with twenty five dollars for a memory card was not happy. <laughs> wow. How many brothers and sisters you got? Well shit, uh so I got on my dad's side I got two brothers and on my mom's side I also got uh two younger siblings and a sister. Wow. So okay. but it's like it's it's no way me being the middle kid. Right. Shit, I ain't getting no twenty five dollar memory card. Not every time. Not every time. Beats, man, I'm talking about, oh, I'm gonna rap on this. Right. Stop it. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. What's up, y'all? This your girl, comedian Erica Duchess, and today is Word on the Street. And today I have my girl. What's your name? My name's Gabby. Hey, Gabby. And you look fab today. Yeah, okay, you. Gabby, what question do you have for my boy, Big Grit? All right, if you could experiment with any music, sound, or genre, what would it be and why? Okay. Hey, bitch, Screech want to know. Back to you, Scotty. <laughs> If I could experiment with a completely different genre of sound, what would it be? Clearly, it would have to be soul, uh, soul music, blues, um, dabbling jazz, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of elements of that that, you know, really kind of is what birthed hip hop in itself. So to be back to, like, to go to the original aspect and to create the kind of music that people like to sample now, like, but actually as authentic as I can, people like the Dap Kings, do they they do their thing, but working with like people like Keon Harold, Kenneth Whalum, you know, Robert Glassberg, and then create something that's just authentically soul or jazz, I'd be 100%. That's hard. Yeah. 2011, you was featured on the cover of WSL. Yeah. Um, which I thought was really dope. And I think this was like, for me anyway, the beginning of knowing about Creek. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You was on the cover with, uh, I think it was Meek Mill, Saha. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mac Miller was on that. Kendrick. Um, oh man, it's so I can't. My mind's yeah, leaving me no, right now. Yeah. How how do you feel like the game has changed from now to Streaming. Streaming was the first. That was a pivotal moment. We saw it. Didn't quite understand what it meant, but it was being sold, 
in a way that it was going to create an even playing field for every artist. So it's going to be like, oh, this is like the Wild Wild West. As long as you can get numbers and people can listen to your music no matter where, it's going to benefit you. And clearly that hasn't been the case now. Right, right. But um, it just, what it did was, the beauty of it, it made it where you didn't have to use a large amount of marketing dollars to promote yourself. The problem is it made it hard to make that money back to keep promoting yourself. Thanks. So it's like, based off the numbers and the algorithms, and they'll be like, well, this didn't meet the quota that some people wanted it to go. Then they dial the numbers back. And you slowly, slowly but surely get them dialed back more and more because mm -hmm. a million streams back in 2012 might have been a lot of streams. Right. But a million streams in, in 2024. Ain't a lot. That's crazy, man. I mean, like, even for me now, just trying to understand the streaming where I saw Snoop Dogg recently talk about how, you know, back then when, I guess, when you first started rapping, yeah. when I first started rapping, the thing that I, I was interested in is that you sold a tape for nine ninety nine or a CD. It was in Best Buy, right? Yeah, you can have your release part in Best Buy. Yeah, or, yeah. but then you knew it was like a, it was like, yeah, or you knew how much you was going to make per CD yeah. every time. Mm -hmm. And now the streaming world has made it where it's like, we don't know. If I make a million streams, I don't know how much money that is. It, and it, it, it fluctuates. It might, it, today, it might not mean what it means tomorrow. That's you know crazy. What I'm saying? But it's, if you, you, you saw it start to happen when the bootleg man disappeared. Mm -hmm. Bootleg man went away. Then once he went away, then... Places like Best Buy, Walmart, stop really holding CDs or taking any CDs at all from people. So then you don't have the radio reps that move you around to certain cities with physical copies. And then before you know it, physical copies is obsolete because now there's no CD players in your car. Wow. Which makes so, sense. <laughs> it's it makes like, sense, If you do sell somebody a CD player, if they don't got an old school, they're going to play it. Damn. Right. So... Progressing now, this is this is like for me when I really started diving into the crit world was around Smokers Club. Ah, <laughs> how I was that smoking. experience? I wasn't smoking, so I'm around. But you was on the tour, oh, though. My God, bro, it was it was uh, it was it was fun. But the very first Smokers Club, it was like Animal House it had to be, and it was like seventeen. Near the end of it, it was like seventeen of us on one tour bus. To the point it's like people standing up in the house. It was crazy. And so I remember I ended up missing, and Smoke Dizzle might get mad at me about it. I'm a, like I ended up missing uh, two, two or three shows because it was just so lit on the bus. And at nighttime, I'm just gone, knocked out. But Smoke Dizzle, he blazes it up. Right. So in the middle of the night, I'm just high. You know what I'm saying? And then one show, I'm like... Bruh, like, I'm, I don't know what it was, but it was like, bruh, I can't perform right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had to jump off the show for like three days trying to get myself to go. For real? Because I was getting high every night in between, just knocked out in my bunk. I done closed my shade, but it's just, <laughs> nigga just lit. lit. So much. Lit. Good times, though. How, <laughs> how much yeah. of an impact do you feel like being on the Smokers Club tour has played in your career? I mean, it showed me a lot. It was, uh, it was the, the concept of, first off, camaraderie. Mm. Because a lot of us not only were financially free, we no way. We, some of us had deals, some of them, others didn't. And we started to see a lot of people in the midst of that get signed. Wow. But it was like, we working on songs, we, you know, people uh, getting the, the call, like, hey man, this person wants something going on there. Or even if you did it with something in your family, you literally around people, and it's like, you're like, man, bro, what's going on at the crib? I don't got to get my bread right. Because mm. a lot of them show that you can pay what you want. Right. You know, but you, you go to that stage every night. You know what I'm saying? Man. So it was a lot of camaraderie there. I, I, as I watched it, you know, seeing Currency there, Wiz was there, yeah. Smoke Dizzy Smoke was there. Yeah. Yeah. Stally was on one of them. Stally was on one of them. It was a gang of us, man. Big Sun was like Big Sun for yeah. sure, man. Big shout out to Big Sun, yeah. man. Yeah, we was on the Yeah, bus. man. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'm going to break it down. So this was like the all-star. Like the up, they was upcoming, but they were still like the all-stars 
or like the best of the best bloggers. Okay. Nigga, okay. before they all blew up, blew up, blew up, yeah. they was all on this tour together. Yeah. Okay. So you, you, I don't think, I mean, maybe it has been done since then. I haven't really seen it. It's yeah. been, you know, people have tried to duplicate it. The first person that I saw go on tour based off of just sheer underground presence was Wiz. Yeah. And then we set the standard for, okay, we can go out here with just a few records out that we got and, and rock out. And that was the beginning of, I'm, I'm a tour all being underground. Like, and I'm still Damn. gonna get the venue that some of the signed artists in, I'm still gonna get the tour bus and just grow organically. But in the beginning, it was not like that. We was on a 15-passenger van, uh, van on Return of Forever tour, and it was grueling, bro. It was me, Jackie Chain, Freddie Gibbs, and Big Sun, and Smoke Dizzle. But when I tell you, that was a dangerous tour. <laughs> like, it was dangerous because the, the routes we taking, we all taking turns driving. On you, bus? On, no, it wasn't a bus. It was a white passenger van, Return of Forever tour. Oh. Tough gig. Tough gig, but it was like we his shoulders, like man, I can get out here, and I can get it, and, they, and these cities was booking us, and it didn't matter if it was thirty five people in there or a thousand, like come through. I think that is why a lot of people who are in the music industry now, man, I know for me, seeing y'all do it, seeing yeah. Wiz do it, yeah, without like you saying having some of those major records, mm -hmm. it definitely opened up like the idea, like shit. Yeah. It's what I up. can give me a van and goddamn. Yeah. Cause I think in some of them vlogs, he was in y'all they was Yeah, bro. Yeah. We were pulling up while yeah. was be driving. Johnny Shy, how was it working with Johnny Shy? Well Shy was in the in the early stages of my career. I remember getting a phone call from him about a record I had called I like, just touched down. Mm. And at the time, it's like 2009, and he was working with Nipsey Russell. Mm. So he actually wanted me to like to get some some beats. He was working with Sean Kingston too. And I he hit me on my space and I thought he was fucking lying. Damn. Bro, ain't no crazy. way he always working with you, bro. Right. You didn't hit me on my MySpace account. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then over time, I started to actually see that he was actually working with these people and build up a rapport. And Smoke Dizzle was one of the first people that I was able to talk to. He's like, bro, come to New York, bro. Just see what we got going on. And then that's how I ended up meeting Cash, man. From Shite, Steve-O, uh, Nipsey, Smoke Dizzle, you know what I'm saying? Man. Uh, Dutch, you know, like uh, Cousin Todd. Right. Damn, that's hard, bro. Please make some noise one time for Big Crit, man. So, nah, he is. Look, I went on tour with this guy. I was on the yeah, Critically I think, I think we Crit had Critically <laughs> Acclaimed Tour. Yeah. And, um, man, I, I'm going to tell you my, the moment that I remember the most. When we went to Houston. Yes. You remember this? No. But I remember, you've been I on a lot of tours, nigga. I don't remember Houston. Man, I don't remember listen, man. Specifically what happened. All right, so <laughs> to give people some perspective, right? I've been on a lot of tours. All right, I've been on tour with B.O.B., I've been yeah. on tour with Starlito yeah. and Don Trill, Trinidad, James, on and on and on, right? Yeah. I went on tour with Crick, and we pulled up to Houston. And the line was wrapped around the whole building. <laughs> it was like yeah. the first time that I had seen this before. Yeah. And I've been on tour with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? At this time, this was like 20, what? 20, uh, 2018? No, 2017. Like 16, maybe. Something like that. Okay. One of, the, one of the time, something like that. But, yeah. man, it was so many people that came to see this man perform, dog. And it was like this every single night. Yeah. Wow. Lines wrapped around the building, but that Houston was just crazy. Texas, Army yeah. came out. Yeah, yeah. Night. Was that warehouse? Was that warehouse was like, live? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I remember. He came out there. I'm trying to... He, it, was, it was a few people. I think I brought out a bun, slim, all... Ah. I remember being in the hallway. Bond was there and just... <laughs> and this was like... It, it meant a lot to me because I knew that like your... You got a lot of like love for Houston. Texas you know in general. Saying? Yeah, definitely. You got a lot of love for you. Where did mm. that come from? Man, because so a lot of the, the Texas artists back in the day used to come through Mississippi and do shows. Uh, so a lot and then and then Memphis artists, A Ball and MJG was literally there once a show. Um and so I remember growing up and then realizing that 
you know, UGK came report on and looking up the population, like, oh, this is literally the same amount of people that's in my city and that was in the city when they, you know, they popping off. And it gave me so much confidence to be unapologetically in the country. Mm. Be subtle. And yeah. then with that, you got DJ Screw, you got uh, Michael Watts, you, you got the Day Hell Bro Blues mixtapes, you got Slim Thug and ESG drop. Uh, Camille and Paul Wall dropped Big Swangers and Bones, and we thought every Texas person voice was screwed up. <laughs> we literally, we was listening to this shit like, bro, every Texas person voice is deep as fuck. Right. Everybody. Right. Until I heard the radio verse. And I was confused. I was like, bro, why they so sped up? They sound like chipmunks. And I was like, hold on, they've been screwing all their freestyles, all their singles was coming out screwed, and we were playing them on our radio station. Like, this the number one song. We each one. So I grew up immersed in that. Wow. Immersed in that, man. And then, um, yeah. and then once again, when Banner they had the record, yep. it was just it like, was from Texas too. yes, then it was like, oh, this this is how I keep bridging the gap by working with them because they clearly don't care how country I am. They'll work with the country. And that's, right. that's another thing I love about you too. Because a lot of us that come from the South, we don't like to be called, some people don't like to be called country. Yeah. Mm. But when you, now my boy Carlo Miller put me up on you. Because I'm like, <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't know nothing about you. I'm like, I don't know no nigga named Grits. I thought your name was Grits. Like, and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But Carlo, like, now nah, he ain't Grits. He kept on, you know. He kept having to say it. Carlo yeah. from, he, where he from? He from Mississippi. He from Mississippi, he from Mississippi too. He from Mississippi too. He country with me. Yeah, yeah so yeah, when he yeah. was yeah. playing yeah. that, when you were playing, country, I think called country shit. Country yeah. shit. Yo. I was like, okay, that's when I was like, I'm out to embrace my country now because you it's not gonna to. go nowhere. I'm, I'm, I'm ATL Westside all day. Yes. I be trying to talk about East when side. I had them job Westside. <laughs> I'm country, I mean, and I like the fact that you embraced that. You made a whole song about yes. this country shit, and yes. I love that, man. And I love it. Cause a lot of folks want to say, "Oh, I'm southern." Mm. Nah, nigga, I'm country. I'm country. It is what it is. I was all the way in Sweden talking my country shit, right. and yes. they were right there with me. Burn yeah, one, like that. Uh, was another person. That oh wow, burn one. Uh, when, yeah. I, when I started like thinking of a burn one, man, I remember like listening to some of like your early your early music on uh, Dreaming. Oh, yeah. It was one of my since this day. That's probably my favorite song you ever made. Thank you, bro. Yeah, that Thank song. You. I think Motion Family shot the video. Yes. Yo. Yeah. And the, the way that worked out was so amazing too with that record. But that was a time where people felt like songs like that couldn't become popular just in on general commercial wise. Mm -hmm. That and when I did Children of the World, I was mm -hmm. being told constantly, "Don't nobody want to hear that kind of music right now." People just want to have fun and they want to party. And I was like, nah, people need to hear this. You right, know what I'm right. Once MTV ran with Children of the World, they opened up the door for me to do Dream because they realized like that honesty and transparency is very much needed in a world where everybody ain't all the time. Right, right. When you write your music, are you trying to reach a level of honesty and like vulnerability when you're making these songs? Mm -hmm. 100%. I know that every day I don't feel the same. And so a lot of times going to write these is therapeutic to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm dealing with something in the moment, if I saw something that happened on the news, something on social media or something with the music industry, I'm, I need to talk about it because before anybody else hears it, I can ride around and listen to it to myself, which normally will soothe me before I put the record out. Right. Um, there was a moment where I felt like that wasn't working which was during the George Floyd situation. And I did the record uh, with Kenneth Whalum, I Might Not Be Okay. And at that time, which I had the opportunity to be on BET Awards and do it, uh, do it acapella. I saw that. that After was, doing that, that yeah. I had no inspiration to write music because I, I hit that point where it's like, is this literally gonna change anything? Like does doing songs like this, uh, constantly putting that message out, does it change anything? And so it was a, a very interesting time in my career and even the people, I'm glad my team was around me because I was trying to figure out how do I move people without always having a beat behind me. Mm. And I think that's why I'm, I'm proud of what you're doing, bro, because this takes away the instrumental. This takes away what might distract somebody from the actual words they need to hear by actually sitting out and having a conversation with somebody. Mm. So I appreciate that. No, thank yeah, you, man. Make some noise, yeah. man. Make some noise. Yeah. Yeah.
So we live, man. You know I got to be a grill for a year at Grill Boss Scotty. But it's only right. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. What type of grill are you thinking about getting today? Man, I, I think I want to switch it up every time. I want to do something a little different. Okay. I want to let somebody in the crowd actually get a grill. Ah! What? But they got to answer a, a question. I got to ask them what, you know, just to see how long they've been listening oh, to my okay. music. Okay, 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 okay. Well, what's the question? And so this is the question, man. We're going to figure it out. So this is the question. What year did Glass House come out and what other two artists was featured on it with me? Jesus, he didn't even let me. Yeah, he didn't get nobody tired. He does have his hand. He got it right, though. Man, but hold up. He got it right, though. He point at you, bro. Now I got to ask another question, man. Hold on. That was okay. All right. Hold on. He was right, though. Woo. Now you get the question out. My boy, ready. Yeah, we're going to re go. We're going to come back to you, bro. Okay. What year did the original country shit come out? Okay, now you gotta select somebody. Yeah. See, now, nah. so now nah, hold on, I got to put, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> Damn, it sound about right though. Hold on, you said Damn. country shit. Yeah, the original. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> With this, I know both of y'all, y'all can't win, and new face can't win. So no, no, moving on. We gotta ask another one. Okay, man. okay, last one, what we got? Oh, yeah. What year did Return of Forever come out? My man been raising his hand for it every time. All right, let it go, bro. Uh, let it go, bro. I know both of y'all, man. You feel me, bro? I can't hear, yeah, man. Come uh, on, man. All right, come on, my dog. Yeah, bro. Come on, we ready for you. You got it, bro. You got it, bro. Hell no, y'all can't win. Uh, yeah. All right, cool, man. So what's your name? Ray. Ray? Yeah. Where you from, Ray? I'm originally from Compton. I've been living at uh, GH 1005. Okay, for sure. And you said you found out about Big Crit through Currency. Yeah, both of y'all. Dang, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Was it a particular song or just him talking to us? Um, I heard about Big Crit through Glass House. And then I heard about you from uh, Cloud9 Remix and Top Down. Dang, that's hard. Hey. All right, so we're going to do your grill, man, today. So what you got in mind, man? Just a uh, traditional gold, two feet, bottle. Okay. Show the things? Yes. Yeah. All right, man, make sure you don't talk. Make sure you don't smile or move your mouth side to side while we do this, OK? <laughs> This girl, man. Somebody get this girl, man. <laughs> don't make that, don't make her let you laugh, bro. Please. All right, bye. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm gonna get into my smile pack of the day, man. Erica is crazy. But listen, musicians who smile during performances, they tend to connect with their audience more strongly and smile convey confidence with warmth, positivity, making the performance more engaging and making it a more pleasable experience for the crowd. So please, make sure you put your smile on when you're on stage, you feel me? So they can feel that thing. Scott ATL, man, this is my smile fact for the day. Brought to you by our sponsor, man, Naya. So, you know I gotta ask you about it. Oh, how? I knew that was gonna be the question. First of all, <laughs> did you take it as a diss? Who you know what? Friend? He mentioned your name. Do you Who? know what I'm talking about? Who? Kendrick Lamar mentioned Chris' name in the record. Amongst other people. Amongst other control. people. Yeah. Maybe like five to ten people. Yeah. Say what you do. It was a sentence. It, it was it's, not it's, a whole record. It's, what, it's what I was doing. It ain't uh, what I do. He was doing. He was doing good. I'm snapping. He was snapping. That one I'm doing. Did you take it as a diss? No. So this is what happened, man. I wasn't bothered by it till I saw a lot of people that never listened to my music before. A lot of DJs, a lot of execs, just people would chime in about me as an artist, but never listened to my music. They just heard my name. And the very first song that popped up, they made a judgment call and just started dissing me. Down the line, it was the most negativity I've seen in my career, but mostly from people that never heard me. Mm. 
So that's why I say it was what I was doing because I was on his radar, I meant to say that. Yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of people in the industry that had no idea who I was because I was a country boy, underground, just trying to get people to listen to my music. Right. Not like I had really a large amount of success or support from the label that I was with at the time. And then I saw this, uh, before that even came out, there was a lot of camaraderie with the hip-hop. Right. Everyone was working together. Everyone was touring, doing songs together, producing for each other. And it was like this, this underlying frustration that we weren't beefing. Like, oh man, how y'all all friends? Like, how y'all get in the studio? Like, that ain't what hip hop's competitive. Right. And it was like, man, we all making money. Right. And we actually <laughs> working together. And if you do get, you know, killed on the record, it's cool. Because it's literally the point of doing a jam song. Mm. After that, I saw artists just stop working with each other. Everybody went into their central hub. They stopped telling people that other people are out. Stop telling people to support other people, and it became so competitive. Where I would, was people that I could just hit up and like, "Yo, bro, you jump on this?" Like, "Nah, bro, I can't." And so that was the beginning of the shift where you see artists are so. How can I put this? The criticism is so different now. When you supposed to you know, be the best person get, on the yeah, song, yeah. Bro, we get on the song, bro. I'm not taking you lightly. Right. That's the point. Yeah, nigga, we we we, 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 we basically we exactly yeah. right. And so I think the industry just turned it on its head so much that where it separated fans from just being fans of music, and you had to choose who you're a fan of, who you support. Wow. And if you support that person, you got to be willing to comment, battle it out with somebody else that you don't know. That's crazy, man. So it's, it's funny because even as I look like back at it and, and I see like where different people are at in the game, lyrically, you one of the best. Ever. I ain't worried. Yes, he is. I, I ain't worried. And I, I yeah, I and, 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 and I'll make, I'll make the beat that I, that I go on, like I go crazy on you with. Yeah, yeah. And I will record myself and probably mix it. That's a lot. Now, now, <laughs> what do you think is, is it by decision a bit creative? You say, man, I don't, I don't want to be where these other artists are at. Mm -hmm. I, I like where I'm at in terms of having your space, not necessarily being there with all the cameras flashing mm -hmm. at you all the time. Is it because I feel like you, you, you could do what everybody else is doing? Yeah, I think God made a decision for me. Mm -hmm. I think it was God like, um, I had so much in you know, my competitive nature came from point of survival. When I first started making music, being competitive is what got me from Mississippi to Birmingham, working with artists, on it. being in Atlanta, jumping on people records, being in New York, and now I'm doing freestyles with Smoke Dizzle and, you know, Currency, and I'm on Sway. Being competitive was a survival mechanism, and it worked really well. But once I finally gained some kind of financial freedom, that part of me wasn't serving me, it was creating anxiety. It was creating anxiety, frustration, and it had me thinking that I deserved things that really weren't for me. Mm -hmm. I saw everyone else get it. Wow. And so after the control thing happened, I dropped Mount Olympus and I, I, I gave it my own. And I saw that it ain't a diss record I could put out. It ain't a lyric that I could that I could put out to get with my mind I think I deserve. It. Because the industry doesn't champion what I am as an artist. Mm -hmm. I don't have the resources to, to make it even crazier. I, I didn't... I couldn't leave out of my yard and go give the biggest DJ my single. Mm. It's, it's just not going to work like that for me. Mm. And so once I came to that realization, once I removed myself from the survival, competitive nature, I became more comfortable with what God was putting in front of me, mm. which made it a whole lot easier just to make music that makes me happy. Mm. Mm. You know. I like that. Um, it's funny because we have this conversation in... I told you, like, I, I talk to currency, like, to this day, and sometimes I get, I get upset I don't get invited to some of the parties. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to go to the I But, I, but the at the same time, I don't want to be there. You don't need to be in the party. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I think that's, I that's, the, that's the other side of it that I think some people don't, don't see, because when I first started, man, you know, my whole thought process was that, damn, I wanted to be bigger than I am right now as a rap artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In, in my own career. And I think I felt like 
I got shortchanged, but then as I kept going, I realized that mentally what I gained, the amount of people that I mm -hmm. impacted, and to be honest, I probably made more money doing what I'm doing than I would have did as a rapper. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? 100%. Like G, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Oh, you got to give a shout out to God too. Exactly. Like, look, you, know, you like, I'm gonna take you this direction. You know what I'm mean? saying? You don't need to be over here. And, and I feel like mentally, bro, I feel like you are searching for something different than other artists are searching for too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we talk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. So, like, on a mental health level, yeah. you. You understand that kind of stuff. Like, speak on that a little bit. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've been, I've been seeking. I've been going to therapy since 2015 mm -hmm. because I realized that I found myself, I found myself in a position where I wasn't telling people exactly how I felt. Mm -hmm. I was just pushing through, just always pushing through. Mm -hmm. And then I lean on my advice a lot more at that point, which is alcoholism. I've always spoke about that. Mm -hmm. I've had songs about it. But it was to the point where I woke up one day when I was in Vegas and I looked in the mirror and I didn't recognize myself. Mm. And this is what I was considered disassociated. I disassociated and I finally, it, it finally was like, oh, I can't do, I can't deal with this. Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, and it probably was like seven, eight days of being drinking, not really drinking water. Mm -hmm. It was constantly out in the back. And I was like, as soon as I get home, I'm going to go, I got to go. Mm -hmm. And slowly but surely, I started to work on my mental health. Mm -hmm. That made me feel like you sleep when you die. You know what I'm saying? Which is wrong. Yeah, you need sleep. I know, you know, get you rest. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah, when you man. when you in a position, when you in a position where things are for free, right? Which people see you, they want to buy you a shot. You know, sometimes it's okay to say no. Yeah. But I was in the. I was like, man, man, thank you. Like I'm I'm in that mode where I don't want to make you feel. So and I and I hit that wall where every interaction that I had with people was around alcohol. It mm -hmm. was I'm drinking at the studio. I'm 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 drinking at any little engagement. I'm drinking before interviews. I'm drinking before my show. Well, I've been doing that. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where even trying to go to sleep, I'm finna get me a drink. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like this ain't tour. This ain't nobody around. I'm just consuming because I'm so used to doing it. Right. And that's when I was like, man, I got I gotta fix this. I gotta work on this. Um, and the one thing I tell people, the, the, when you get on that journey where you're really trying to fix yourself, you're trying to change the narrative of yourself, you're going to lose a lot of people on that way. Man. You're just going to be people that's just, you're going to be like, damn, we ain't got nothing in common no more, but that's life. Yeah. And that is okay. And there's nothing wrong with the unknown you and getting to know that version. Because if you keep doing the same thing, expecting different, different results, clearly you, it's insanity, you know. Man, I, I gotta thank you, man, so much for coming through, man. Oh yeah, man. Like, this has been an awesome conversation, bro. We yeah. do this all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. Um, thank you, man, for your words, man. And thank you, bro. Just for what you've given us as a community, yes sir. As a people, you know what I mean. From not only your songs and your music, but through your inspiration and the way you live life. Thank you, you know what I mean. I pray and I hope that somebody sees you and is inspired to take a, uh, a look at themselves yeah. and see what's more important. You know what I'm saying? I received that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Real yes, sir. Talk. And I just think, man, you're so you're so dope as a person, man, as an artist, as a producer. I know that God has got so many things for you, and I and I know you. I know you still. I'm working still on cooking. Myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing. And for those who don't know, let me say this real quick. Yeah, nigga. I looked at your career, cause let me let me say this. Nah, some real shit. Nah, I gotta say this. I gotta say this. When we when when like I I hear this question a lot. When is Crit gonna drop some more music? Yeah. Right. And I don't want you to answer it. But I had when I looked at your career, bro. You've been consistently dropping a project every two to three years yeah. since you've been out in what we know. Yeah. So. I want to shout you out on that too. Thank you. Man. Nigga, wait on the fucking next <laughs> album, nigga. And stop asking. I mean, it's over 300 songs out there. Yeah, you can, you man. Can find some of your yeah. But I mean, I'm just trying to live life and get more experiences. Yeah. And then to put that in my music. And I would say this a lot of artists, 
I, I, I challenge you as you listen to your own stuff, do not fall back into your old patterns. Mm -hmm. With me, I listen to some of the stuff I put out in my career early on, and I'm trying to recorrect that now, mm -hmm. lyrically, mm -hmm. because I don't feel that way, and mm -hmm. I might have felt like that back then. So that just comes with the growth, you know right. what I'm saying? There's no way the version of me should still be on the same version I was in my early 20s. And if I do, I have to at least give you a different perspective. Of it. So that's why it's just taking me a little longer. Nah, man, you, you you're perfecting the crowd. We thank appreciate you. it, dog. Take your time, man. Thank you, thank we you, here with you. Thank hey, you. Hey, man, y'all make some noise for my dog, Big Crit, man. What's up? Hey, man, listen, man, make sure you follow us, man, live on Edgewood TV. I'm your boy, Scott ATL. Shout out to our sponsors, man, Nyack. And one more time for my girl, E. Erica hey, Jeff is in the building. It's going down, man. What's up, y'all? This your girl, Erica Duchess, and I'm in the green room with Dutch Lee. Oh, Dutch. <laughs> Smoking on Dutch Lee. Nigga, this is real belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheating Keith. Yeah. Real by Scotty on the flow mat. Close that down.